Hello everybody and welcome back. In this video solution, we'll talk about the problem jump game. I'm going to dive into it from two different angles. First is the iterative DP approach, which is a lot more intuitive to come up during an interview, as well as the second approach, which is the more optimized order of one space solution. It involves messing around with one simple statement of the problem, and we'll see how to dive into that later on. First, let's try to understand the problem and solidify the concepts. So you're given this list of integers and you're specified two places. You specify the index zero, and this is the index you'll start your game from. You also specify the index four, the place where you'll end the game. This is the index, by the way, where uh, the game ends. So nothing to do with the value four, but to do with the index of four. Okay. Since the problem is jump game, you can jump around all of these values. Now this value of two, for example, specifies that you can jump anything from one all the way up till two steps ahead. This value of three specifies that you can jump one, two or three steps ahead, so on and so forth. We can do this for every single value. Let's take the case where we have this value two. We're starting from this index and let's start jumping from this point. Let's jump two points over here. So we'll take one step, skip over this three and directly jump on to one over here. One again specifies that we can jump a maximum of one points, so we can jump here and then one again. So we'll jump here. At this point, we have successfully reached the end of this array. We have successfully reached the ending point, And so we can return true saying that, yes, indeed, we can reach this last index. Now I want to demonstrate that there is not just one particular path we can take, but multiple different paths we can take. In this case, we started with two directly jumping two steps ahead. But we can also have a case where it jumps one step ahead. So instead of skipping over three, we'll first jump onto three. Three again specifies that we can jump one, two or three steps ahead. In case you jump three steps ahead, we are again done with the game. You can return true again. But the thing is, you can also jump onto both of these ones over here. And if you note, both of these ones are also repeated in this earlier case. So in this case, we can see that we reached this point one. And so we can just pick this path again and uh, continue on. And if you take two steps from three, you'll reach this point. And so you can take one again and reach this point. Basically, this is sort of the structure which we hint at in while using a DP. So let's think in terms of an iterative DP. So let's first try to formalize what we've already seen before. The maximum index we can jump onto is i plus nums of i. And the next indices, which is which can be a whole range of indices in middle, is given by i plus k, where k is in one common nums of i, both inclusive. Both inclusive, by the way, is an important property which will come across later on. So what it basically means is starting from this index i, you can jump on to the maximum index of here, which is i plus nums of i. But you can also jump on to all of the intermediate indices in between. Let's exploit this property going forward. Now, since we're talking about DP, let's also formalize what DP means. The goal of this problem is to return whether you can reach this endpoint or not. So let's let DP of I represent reach. So if DP of I is true, that means that we can reach that point. We can reach the nth point. And if DP of I is false, we cannot reach the ith point. So now we can build on top of that and say that if not DP of I, if you can't reach that particular index, that's fine, just skip over it. But if you can reach that index, let DP of I plus K be equals to DP of I. Saying that if you can reach the ith index, you can also reach all of the indices in I plus K. And this is the entire logic. Let's go ahead and start coding this up in Python 3. By the way, I have to mention quickly before this solution will take a lot of time in runtime, although it's very simple to understand and explain. So uh, yeah, just a warning beforehand. Let's iterate over all of the values. We'll iterate over all of the indices as we saw before. And for each index, we're asking the question, hey, if not DP, if not DP of I, if you can't reach this point, then continue. If you can reach this point, however, start a for loop from K, which ranges from one to nums of I. 
note that numsify is has to be included in this particular range so we'll do plus one because of python syntax and so with this we can say that if dp of uh, uh we'll say dp of i plus k equals to dp of i you can alternatively say dp of i plus k is equal to true both mean the same thing uh before that we should do a quick sanity check we should say that if you know what this i plus k could go out of bounds so we'll do if i plus k is uh, less than equals to n minus one then that's fine uh you can do this computation otherwise just skip over it also we should check hey if i plus k equals to equals to n minus one which means that we have reached this index so instead of setting it to true and then continuing on and on we can just return to directly over here this is small cutting corners but uh, this optimization is needed for this problem at the end we can return dp of n minus one and before that we'll also specify dp since dp is a list of uh, values we specify whether we can reach a point or not let's all initialize them with false let's say that initially we can't reach any point and so we'll set dp equals to false dp of zero however is going to be true since we can always start from the zeroth index and with this we can try running this code uh, yeah okay so this will work and you can try submitting this and it should give you a very bad runtime over here uh, i definitely do not recommend risking a lot of time limit errors so what you can do instead is uh, we can dive into the more efficient optimized space solution approach which is not only optimized in terms of space but also time because let me show you again the solution runs in order of n over here and this is order of k over here order of k by the way k is just a range of nums of i plus one so if we look at this nums of i you'll realize that this is in the range of 10 to the power 5 so we have 10 to the power 5 over here and 10 to the power 4 over here which is quite clearly like 10 to the power 9 which can easily go out of bounds even on other different websites like other competitive programming websites so generally not a good idea to risk it especially if you are in python so i think we can finally move on to the more efficient approach okay so what we're going to do here is we're going to focus on this maximum next index value that we had recall that if we were at starting at this particular index as i we can jump on to this maximum index and let's say that we were always keeping a track of this maximum index the only variable we are going to store instead of this entire list of dp is just going to be the simple maximum index and this will tell us what is the boundary of the things we can explore and this boundary is important and very interesting as well because this boundary essentially says that if you can reach this index then you can most definitely reach all of the indices before it because if there was a value who could reach and directly jump onto this index that value that i could also reach all of the values in the middle right so you can always look at this maximum index and make your judgment on the basis of this only and so we'll keep a track of maximum index and we'll say and this is the interesting case we can say that if maximum index is less than current index then return false what i mean by that is if the maximum index is this guy and you are suddenly at this particular point this is the boundary over here and you've crossed that boundary which means that the maximum values you can reach is limited by this and what you're looking at is this guy which basically says that there is a gap there is a gap in between the boundary you have and the current index you're looking at and in that case we can say that we can no longer cross this gap and so we'll directly return false if you can't cross that gap there is no way you can make it all the way over there like you've already failed over here so this is the entire piece of logic and uh, i think we can start coding this up okay so the first thing we want to do is keep a track of maximum index and we'll start it from zero because zero is the index we're starting from we'll iterate over all the values so for i comma x in enumerate nums we'll say that hey if i 
is if the current index i is greater than maximum index if you cannot reach the ith point then directly return false there is no way can, you can make that gap across so we'll just return false otherwise if you can reach that otherwise say that maximum index is the maximum of maximum index and the logic we had seen before i plus nums of i nums of i by the way here is x and so with this we can also return uh, what will we return over here by the way you can directly return true over here so in any case you find a gap you will directly return false and if you are able to do that entire computation you're able to go over each and every single nums then we can return true at the end let's try running this for a quick sanity check and we'll submit this so this should show a lot better runtime of 600 milliseconds as compared to the iterative dp approach i'm very sure that if we tried the recursive dp approach that would give us a lot more time limit exceeded errors that's not a good sight to see anyways so yep yeah, this is it for the problem jump game See you in the next video.